welcome to Shad Life. Today I'm gonna compare these two bikes. We're gonna go from the early days, basically the original days of BMX. So we're talking mid 70s right around here, early to mid 70s, to what I'm riding today. Um, and just talk about kind of the progress. I mean, there's some obvious visual ones but if you go back, this is where BMX got its start. Um, this frame is based on the original Schwinn Stingray frame. And this is the Scrambler version. Essentially what they did is they just added some reinforcement welds. Because if you look at a Stingray frame, they didn't have this weld, didn't have this weld, and so on. So this was one of the bikes we rode last weekend. Uh, my friend John built these up and did a video i did a video on it which i'll put up in the corner there um but uh i want to talk about kind of the progress that has been made over the years and it's it's pretty phenomenal um so probably talking what 50 years pretty close yep so uh back in the probably late 60s even as far back kids were starting to kind of mimic more or less motocross and if you look at this bike you can kind of see how bmx kind of evolved to, to be more like a uh, motocross bike so notice the seat <laughs> and the stem two key things and then of course the handlebars um and then of course the plate on this i like how john added the plates to all the bikes just to give you that feeling but and then some knobby tires right um so they basically were taking twin stingrays and then later the scrambler and converting them to be more off-road friendly um if you saw that video you'll notice some of the bikes had just a regular seat because generally these bikes came with a banana seat and then kids would upgrade to this you know using what we used to call sissy bar which i don't think is really politically correct anymore <laughs> but the idea was is they called it a sissy bar because if you were on the back being bucked and you had to hold on to the bar you were considered a sissy i think it's kind of silly but that was the 70s right <laughs> um so the they would upgrade to more of a motocross style seat i used to call them mx seats right um and then they would upgrade we had, used to have single clamp what used to be called gooseneck stems that would only clamp in the middle and this was an upgrade to hold the bars better um during the last weekend's ride the bars did move on me so even though these were an upgrade they weren't nearly as good as today's stems um and then heavy duty spokes big spokes i remember if you had heavy duties on your bike back then you were cool um and rims i mean this is authentic to it exactly what was ridden back then um called these rat trap pedals a lot of pedals that came on bikes had rubber here rather than cages so you'd switch them out to cage pedals um gearing coaster brake of course weren't using hand brakes back then um this is just regular old steel we weighed this bike it actually is a, right around 36 pounds um so pretty heavy um so regular steel otherwise referred to as mild steel and pretty much everything on this bike is steel with the exception of the front hub that's aluminum it's like an upgraded hub usually uh we'd use uh, 10 speed track hubs and then i think some of this is cast aluminum might be cast steel actually i don't know it's hard to tell um but steel steel and mild steel not like really good heat treated steel or alloy steel so you know things bent things broke they didn't hold up to uh the abuses of bmx so um right around this time was when things were quickly evolving and then straight tube frames came out i know redline was one of the first companies to do that tubular forks and stuff these are tubular forks straight tube frame right so really early 70s 
and then by the mid 70s straight tube frames started coming out and by the late 70s that was really what bmx evolved to um and chrome molly started to become a uh, thing 4130 chrome molly is a much higher end lighter weight and stronger form of steel so it's still steel but it's just an aluminum chromium molybdenum 4130 i don't always know what those numbers mean somebody <laughs> can but i think it has something to do with the mixture and then there's heat treating processes and things like that so um so that's really where bikes started right bmx this is where BMX got its start, at least modern form of BMX. Um, so um, let's go look over to where we've gone in 50 or so years. Now, granted, this is a freestyle bike or street bike, park bike, whatever you want to call it, um, versus, you know, back in those days, freestyle didn't even exist yet. So this was, you know, people were racing these or jumping them, whatever. Um, but essentially, um it's similar enough with the exception that race bikes now i mean there's so many different classifications of bmx bikes you have race bikes you know street bikes uh dirt jump bikes things like that but all in all the technologies are relatively similar with the exception of probably the frame a lot of race bikes now they're either aluminum or carbon <laughs> And the forks are carbon or aluminum some people still run steel sports forks but aside from that a lot of similar things so we'll start with a frame um, one of the big things that uh, started to evolve and I would say probably late mid to late 80s and going into the early 90s BMX frames started to get longer because they used to always be pretty short like this bike is really short compared to this bike this is a 21 inch top tube so now BMX bikes fit a lot better Handlebars have definitely evolved. They're no longer kind of goofy, swept up like that. They're pretty flat, um, much easier to control, um, and a huge advancement was in stems. Aluminum, you know, clamp stems like this started coming out by the late 70s. Uh, tough neck, pro neck, things like that. Um, the dual clamp style like this i know mongoose had some too for a while um they kind of came out of favor once the aluminum ones came out and the stem really hasn't evolved much since with the exception of now stems use the threadless clamp on style where the fork steer comes up and the stem clamps on the top of the fork much more stronger you know lighter easier to work with system than here where the stem shaft goes down into the fork and there's a little wedge in there as you tighten this it wedges to the inside of the fork not nearly as strong and solid and then you had to have these separate you know adjustments to get your bearings tension just right right so it's getting those these have been part of bmx all the way up until the mid 90s when BMX finally started to go over to the threadless systems um, so kind of cool there a pretty big advancement and these bars I think I had one really hard landing once and they moved back on me once they went Ert! but that's it like they don't they do not move on me and, and since then I haven't had them move but you know in a, in a sense if I land really bad somehow and the bars move I'm okay with that because it's better the bars move than something break or snap or something um, and then tubular forks look at these old forks the bladed ones you know I'd say mid 70s the two tubular forks I don't know if it was redline I think it was redline that kind of started that redline gets a lot of credit for some of the firsts in BMX and then um, just much stronger forks of course 4130 chromoly here um, just mild steel there the forks used to bend and break all the time I remember that <laughs> um, and now if we look at the wheels um, we went through this phase, especially with freestyle bikes, where we're at 48 spokes and we're putting more and more spokes in. And the rim is aluminum and aluminum hubs and stuff. But then we realized, well, if you make the rim stronger, these are um, Odyssey um, 
uh, what are they called again? I always forget. Uh, hazard lights, that's it. Uh, like triple wall, super, they're, they're light, but they have a structure inside that makes the rim really strong. So then you can run fewer spokes and your, the spoke, spoke tension is what holds the wheel. So much lighter, much stronger. Even though these wheels had heavy duty spokes and things like that, it didn't take much to bend them. And if you tried any tricks, like 180s or 360s, you'd just fold the rim really easily. Uh, these, I've crashed, I've 180 bad, I've whatever, I have yet to bend them. So um, I do every once in a while go through and check the spoke tension just to make sure that they're solid, but that's just the maintenance thing. Now, let's uh, look at the crank set. These are a three-piece crank, spindle in the middle, 4130 chromoly again, chromoly spindle, aluminum chain ring. Come over here, we got, again, mild steel, one piece crank, steel chain ring. Um, one piece meaning in order to get it out, I have to slide the whole, take that pedal off, undo the, again, kind of tension thing, similar to how the headset is. You have to get just right for the bearing adjustment, and then you have to take all this apart, and then you have to feed the cranks out of the bottom bracket. Here, just simple tension on each side, right? Get the correct bearing tension, and then uh, I can take one arm off and slide these cranks out. Super easy to work with. Um, and so on sealed bearing bottom bracket, that's the other thing, this bike, everything is sealed bearing. This bike, nothing has sealed bearings. They're just open bearings. Like if any grit gets right in that crack right there, then the bearings are right inside there. <laughs> Here, if grit gets in the crack, it's all sealed and stuff. So it doesn't get into the, where the bearing is. Right? Um, so pretty much there you have it. Oh, of course, this bike has pegs. Uh, this has what's called a planetary free coaster. Um, this has a coaster brake, <laughs> so the nice thing about coaster brakes is in the, in the 80s, freestyle riders rode with coaster brakes because they like to do additional tricks by locking up the back wheel with their feet and not hand brakes. And then the other advantage is they could roll backwards and the pedals wouldn't pedal backwards. Well, modern free coaster brakes <laughs> give me the advantage of a cassette but I can roll backwards and it doesn't engage. And so I, you'll see some videos of me when I'm rolling backwards, I don't have to back pedal. And that's because of the free coaster. Um, of course, hand brakes, because I don't have a coaster brake. So uh, on this bike, I have rear. A lot of freestyle riders or street riders, whatever nowadays, don't even run brakes, which is kind of boggles my mind a bit. <laughs> And then lastly, we just got a simple single post seat. Don't really sit on the seat. Here, you'd actually sit and pedal around on the seat quite a bit, like we did last weekend. Here, I like hardly ever sit on the seat. Although recently, I did add a quick release. So if I do wanna kinda ride around on this bike to get to some places to ride, I can raise it, ride, slam it, do my riding, things like that. Pedals have evolved over the years. Forgot to mention those, but either aluminum or plastic, the plastic or PC pedals as we like to call them, are more popular in freestyle than they are in racing. And a lot of racers they actually clip in now too. But uh, platform for sure with these little pins, much grippier, believe it or not. You wouldn't think so, but this pedal grips way better than these pedals. <laughs> These don't even have like sharp edges. They did evolve pedals over the years to where they started to get sharper edges and stuff on them. Uh, but then the platform came out. Shimano DX was the first one I remember. I actually did a video comparing that pedal to the new Wolf Tooth Waveform. <laughs> but the DX platform pedal was kind of a game changer. And this design here is kind of very loosely based on the DX, the parallelogram shape, all that. So, you know, bikes have evolved massively. And I'd say the biggest area where they've evolved, even with all the technology 
in this thing being either chrome molly or aluminum you don't see any real mild steel on this bike everything's high-end chrome molly or it's aluminum and it's you know made to high tolerances much higher quality things like that but um it's just evolved quite a bit in the area oh i was going to say the area that where it's most important is you can actually get different size things like here you just had one size bike you had to figure out how to make work here you can get you know from basically a 20 inch 20 20.5 inch frame on up to a 22 inch top tube you can get different height bars right you can do all kinds of things different length crank arms you can change up your bike quite a bit uh, to make it fit better and better for different you know riding styles or uh, rider heights and stuff so um, so there you have it just kind of a quick comparison between <laughs> where it all started <laughs> and where it is today um i don't have a race bike because i don't really race i don't really intend to but similar just you know usually carbon or aluminum frames on race bikes maybe a carbon or aluminum fork um but still like you know similar cranks uh, wheels eh, you know they're similar tires are much smaller on race bikes but they are smooth now because all the tracks are smooth these are actually race bars <laughs> the reason i run race bars on my freestyle bike is because i like the flat bend now i'm going way off topic here but i like how there's hardly any sweep and freestyle bars tend to have more sweep and race bars tend to be flat so that's why I run race bars on here, and it's a race stem too, believe it or not. <laughs> so, all right, there you have it. <laughs> Hope you like videos like this. I uh, just kind of ad hoc this one, or just thought I'm gonna do a video about this. Um, John, let me hang on to this bike a little longer so I could talk about it. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll, that bit ride we did last week was super awesome. Just really getting that feel of how BMX got to start, where it all started, and then how it evolved over the years. It was pretty cool. And I'll do some more videos, maybe talking about kind of some of the different eras of BMX and how BMX evolved. Um, let me know if you're interested in more content like this in the comments. Please like and subscribe. Peace.